Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, take gifts from the richest pile. The idea is we're given an array of gifts. They are going to be integers. I guess in this example, we have this array with five values. They're all positive and I think we can expect that they're all going to be positive or zero. We probably can't have a negative number of gifts. And speaking of gifts, each of these numbers actually represents a pile and the number itself tells us how many gifts are in that pile. And every second we are able to perform an operation, which includes this. We can pick one of these piles, the one that has the max number of gifts. If there are multiple, we can choose any of them. So if there is a tie, like we have two that have 100, we can choose any. And what we want to do with that number is leave behind the floor of the square root. What does that mean? Well, we have 100, so take the square root of it. And when you take the square root of a number, we might end up with a decimal. This time it's going to be 10, but imagine you had uh, the square root of 10, then you're going to get something like 3.33, and we want to take the floor of that, so we want to round that down. We would end up with just 3.0, so just a 3. That's the number we're going to replace the pile with. Now, after we're done with that, specifically after we're done performing this operation exactly k times, which is the second parameter that's given to us. They probably could have mentioned that earlier, but it's actually, for me, easier when they actually mention it when you're actually needing that parameter rather than like mentioning it up front. But sometimes they do that to intentionally confuse you. Either way, that's the problem. How exactly do we go about solving it? Well, so far it seems like a simulation. So that's what you might try. How could we brute force this simulation? Well, find the maximum in an array. That's a linear time operation. And if we have to do it k times, the overall time complexity is going to be n times k. Because every time we're going to have to find the maximum and then replace it with a new value and just keep doing that, you might think, well, can't we just sort the array? Imagine you have an array like this one, 10, 20, and maybe 100. You pick the maximum. You have to scan through. Well, I guess this time you don't have to scan through because it's sorted, so we can just go to the rightmost value and update it by taking the square root of it, it's gonna be 10. But now the problem is we modified the array. So now it's no longer sorted. I mean, we could take this value and then insert it somewhere in sorted order, but that's gonna be a linear time operation in the worst case. So actually sorting the array doesn't really make the problem any better, but there is a data structure that has a sorted property to it. Can you think of the data structure that I am thinking of? Well, it's called a heap. And specifically in this case, we're gonna be needing a maximum heap. This data structure is designed to have like a sorted property, but also be able to add and remove elements from it dynamically. If you're not familiar with heaps, that's perfectly okay. You're probably a beginner and that's fine. I would head over to neatcode.io to learn a little bit more about heaps. You can probably check out my beginner's course or some videos on YouTube about heaps. But this is how it's going to work. We're gonna have the max heap. We're gonna throw all of these values into the heap. We're going to run a built-in method called heapify. It can turn all of these elements into a heap in linear time. So actually it's faster than sorting. So we do that in linear time and then we can run the simulation. So k times we're going to take the maximum. So this time we're going to take 100, remove it from the heap. So now we have 100, we're going to square root it and floor it and we'll have 10 and then we'll take 10 and add it back to the heap. So we replace the 100 with 10. We'll just keep going like that. So now we have 64. I think when you square root that, it'll become eight. Now the biggest is 25, same thing. And now we do 10 um, and then floor it. So it'll be three. And then you do, I guess we've already done actually four runs of the simulation. So now that we are done, what we actually want to do is return the number of gifts that are remaining. So basically just take all the remaining values and sum them up. So whatever's in the max heap, you can just sum up the values. So assuming I did this correctly, we should have eight plus nine plus three, that's 20 plus five and four, that's 29. So that does look correct. So we're pretty much ready to code this up now. In terms of the time complexity though, Pushing and popping from a heap is not linear time, it's actually log n time, where n is the size of the heap. So we're doing that k times, the overall time complexity is going to be k log n. Not too bad. 
space complexity is going to be big of n because we're adding all the elements to the heap. One last thing that I want to quickly mention is when we take these values and add them to the heap, we're actually going to make them negative because Python, unfortunately, does not have a max heap built in, but we can get around that by making all the values negative. Here's an example real quick. If I have negative 100 here, negative 25, and let's say negative 64, I'm going to pop from the heap. Since this is actually a min heap under the hood, what's going to happen is we're going to end up popping the smallest value. That's negative 100. After we pop it, let's take the absolute value of it or just multiply it by negative 1, and that'll make it positive. Then we'll have positive 100. Then we're going to square root it and then take the floor of it, which is going to give us 10. And then when we add it back to the heap, we're not going to add positive 10. We're actually going to add a negative 10 because we want this to actually act as if it were a max heap. And by changing all the values to negative, we can basically do that. So in terms of coding, there's actually not much to do. First, we want to take this array of gifts and turn it into a heap. Python allows you to do this, heapq.heapify, and then pass in the array, and it'll turn it into a heap. Like, basically, it will leave it as a list because heaps are implemented with arrays under the hood. You'd probably know that if you've taken my courses or any uh, courses on heaps. But remember, we wanted all the values to be negative before we did that. So the easiest thing to do in Python is to create a new list, just map all these values and turn them negative. So something like this, let's say, or rather, let's just replace gifts. So this is creating a new list and replacing the gifts variable with it. And so I'm going to use list comprehension. So I'm going to do this for g in gifts for every gift, I'm going to add the negative of it to this list. This is called list comprehension. If you're not familiar with these Python tips and tricks, you can check out my a Python for coding interviews course. It literally will show you how to do this max heap pattern I'm talking about. But after that, we just pop k times. So for underscore in range k, let's go ahead and do heap q heap pop from the gifts heap we will get a value n. It will actually be negative. So to turn it into a positive, I'm going to add a negative sign here. You can do that in Python. In most languages, you would need to do something like this, I think. But in Python, you can get away with this. And so then we want to now push back to the heap a certain value. So back to the gifts heap, we want to push the square root of n. And we want to take the floor of it as well. So in Python, those are some built-in functions we can just use just like that. And then after we're done with all of that, what we want to do is return the sum of the gifts. But don't forget, it's very easy to do so. We made the gifts negative originally. Yes, we can sum them up pretty easily like this, but each of them is going to be negative. So we can just take uh, the negative of this. We don't really have to convert these gifts to all be positive since they're all negative, just summing them up and then taking the negative of that should be good enough. I almost forgot when you add back to the heap, you want to make the value negative. So let's add that one as well. And you can see here it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, you might find my Python for coding interviews course helpful or some of my other courses as well. Here's that lesson I was talking about on the heaps. So if you go down here, how do you do a max heap in Python? There is this lesson, which will literally uh, teach you exactly that. And it has like a nice little interactive lesson where you can literally practice uh, doing that as well. See you soon.